There we go. Uh, homework from last day. Most common mistake I see, kids get the forces okay and they do MG like that. And then what they do is they do perpendicular this far and they draw this parallel to the ground. So they call this mg perpendicular and they call this mg parallel. That's not the way we drew this. You want mg to be the hypotenuse of your triangle, not this long one here. You want the parallel to be parallel to the slope. So you would want to draw this as that far and that far. Otherwise your trig is going to be wrong and everything after that is garbage. Having said that then, can we all go back and look at example 8 right here? Because I didn't get a chance to finish it. And since I like this question, I like this question, I like this question, I like this question, I really should finish it. So here was our analogy, here was our situation. Uh, Nicole, we said we had the mass sliding up a rough ramp, so it's going to slow down really, really quickly. In fact, we said if it's sliding up, friction and mg parallel are in the same direction. Your equation was winner plus winner equals ma. Oh, we said friction is mu times the normal force, which is mu mg. Uh, it was mu, I don't know the normal force, it was mu mg parallel, perpendicular, sorry, mg perpendicular, which was mg cos, we said. We found that the acceleration was 6.02. Then, let's continue on. Part C says, find the time to stop. If I want it to stop, I know V final is zero. Now I called the acceleration negative. The reason I called the acceleration negative now, Brett, is we're slowing down. We're slowing down, so it's negative acceleration from last unit. And if I crunch the numbers, I'll get this. Zero minus 20 divided by negative 6.02. I'll get the time it takes for this block to come to a stop as 0 minus 20 divided by negative 6.02. 3.32 seconds. That's part C. How far up the slope does the mass travel before stopping? What are they asking me to find for part D? Distance. So I'll go D equals question mark. Let's see. I know that T equals 3.32. I know that uh, VI, I believe, was 20. I know that a is negative 6.02. Oh, I can do this. D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. 20 times 3.32 plus 0.5, slowing down, so negative 6.02. 3.32 squared. <clears throat> and I think I said before, I'll say it again, I like this question, I like this question, I like this question. Twenty times 3.32 plus 0.5 times negative 6.02 times 3.32 squared. And I get 33.2 meters. Is that right? Get the same thing? Anyone? Yep. Yeah. So having said that, questions from the homework, now is your chance to ask. Today is a continuation of the last lesson. Today is just called advanced inclines. We're going to look at yuckier inclines, but it's going to be the same concept. Any questions you would like me to go over?
8. Okay. 8 is very similar to the one we just did. Were you writing down what we just did? No? Then I'm going to say later on tonight or later on in class, if you copy this down, because number 8, stay on your example 8. In number 8, do you not have an initial velocity? In your Look at yours. Yes? Is it sliding up the hill? Is there a coefficient of friction? Is it asking how far it goes until it stops or how long until it stops? Uh, I think that's what we just did here. So I, I would normally absolutely do that, but I thought I was preventing your question by doing this one right now. So if you were zoning out, I'd say that's too bad. Watch the video or look at the notes later. Any others? Love to do number 11. Okay. A 5 kilogram mass is at rest on a 15 degree slope. Find the value of the coefficient of static friction. We did say there was two types, and the author is going to be accurate on that, but we said we'll just pretend there's one. I'm going to dulp. So here's my ramp. What's the angle? 15 degrees, so my ramp is way out of scale because that's probably near the 45 degree. Oh, who cares? Here's the mass. What are the forces acting on the mass? Get the obvious ones. Good old mg down. Normal force. Now it says that it's stationary. So if it's stationary, which way is friction acting? Upwards because the gravity wants to pull it downwards. So I know friction this way. Oh, but I need to break gravity up, Brett. I'm going to break gravity up into mg perpendicular and mg parallel. Is that okay so far? Okay, who's winning? Well, it's a trick question. I think it's a tie because it's stationary. But when in doubt, if I'm not sure, I usually let gravity win because I know usually things want to fall down. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to call mg parallel because that's what's pulling it down the hill minus friction. And Brett, why does that equal zero? Because the mass is not it's, excel it's not accelerating, it's stationary. So I know that the net force is zero. And I heard you say because they're the same. In fact, Brett, if you just did that right away, I'd be okay with that step. If you said, look, these two here have to be the same size. I in fact, I'd say, excellent for spotting that without having to write the winner minus loser. Um, friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. Another force, same size as a normal force. What? So I'm going to drop down mg parallel, and this is mu mg perpendicular. And now I'm going to start to do a little bit of trig. We said that as long as we draw our triangle the same way, this 15 degrees right here, Brett, ends up being this 15 degrees up here. Let's do parallel, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. Which trig function? Turns out mg parallel is going to be mg sine of 15. When you do the cross multiply thing, m it works. Uh, what about mg perpendicular, adjacent, and mg is what I always go back to as the one that I know, Andrew. So I have an a and an h, Brett, which trig function there? Turns out it's going to be mg cosine of 15. Oh, and I forgot the mu in front. And I heard somebody murmur under their breath, the g's cancel. Yes, it turns out the m's cancel and the g's cancel. And I end up with sine of 15 equals mu cos of 15. How would I get the coefficient of friction by itself, Brett? No. 
What's happening between the mu and the cos mathematically? Time zinc, so how do I move the cos over? Just divide. It turns out mu is sine 15 over cos 15, and Matt remembers that sine over cosine from math 12 is what? It's tan it, it turns out it's a tangent of the function. You guys don't know that yet, those of you in math 12. You'll eventually learn that sine divided by cosine is actually the same thing as tangent. It turns out it's the tangent of the angle. Engineers would use that shortcut if they were, you know, designing roads and the grade on a road and things like that. Is that okay? Brett, yeah? I like that question. I like that question. We call that a static equilibrium question. Very nice. Any others? Going once. Going twice. Okay, if you're done with that, if you want to hand it in, either today or in the next couple of days, and uh, take a look at the lesson I just gave you then. Lesson seven, please. Advanced inclines. So your test right now, I figure, is going to be around the 10th. Ready? What kind of curveballs can we throw at you? And I think at least one of these would be fair game for a written, but I'll let you know level of difficulty as we go through. Uh, example one says, how much force is required to pull this ramp, this mass, up the frictionless ramp at a constant speed? I would do two things here. I think, Emily, if I was a good student, I would underline frictionless because that makes the question easier. But there's a trigger phrase. You with me now? Okay. There's a trigger phrase here, and the trigger phrase there is constant speed. Emily, what does constant speed mean? Ah, that means that my acceleration is zero. Now, that means something really important, this unit. It means when I go winner minus loser equals, you know what my equals is going to be? Why zero? Because what's force? What times what? And if your acceleration is zero, Emily, what's mass times accel What's any mass? Even if it's a bunch of masses times zero, what's it going to be? Ah, so that's going to change my winner minus loser equation. How are we going to start this off? How have we started off almost every force question that we've been doing so far? I think we're going to. Now, I call it a free body diagram. Since they gave me this lovely picture, I'm just going to label the forces right on here. I'm not going to go walking over here representing the mass as a dot. If I had to, I would if my diagram was too cluttered. But for now, let's label the forces. What are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious ones. Gravity, I'll draw it nice and big, mg. What else? Normal force, which is at a 90 degree angle to the surface. What else? I heard it. Uh, since it's a rope, we've traditionally called a rope tension. So let's put a little arrow here and put a capital T for tension. Friction? No. By the way, if they wanted to make this tougher, could they have added friction? Which way would friction be acting if I'm trying to pull up and not succeeding? Which way would friction be acting? down. Be at what extra force? Mu times the normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, look, 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 look. I know another force. Same side. I, I can get it. Now, this is my free body diagram. Now I'm going to break gravity up into components with a dotted line. And this is mg perpendicular, and this is mg parallel, and this angle right here is 40 degrees. Right, we said as long as you draw perpendicular then parallel, that top angle will always be the 40. We proved it once, so we said good enough. Who's winning? Ah, what did we say? It's a tie. So can you see what my along the incline equation is going to be? What two forces are the same size in this diagram? Brett? That's my equation. Because that because Emily noticed that constant speed means A equals zero. In fact, you know what, Brett? This is almost this is mathematically the same as yours that was standing still, because standing still means no acceleration as well. Einstein was the one who said, You're standing still, you're moving at a constant speed. You can't tell a difference. And mathematically there is no difference. Oh. And I think tension is what they want me to find when it say how much force is required to pull this mass up at a constant speed. Okay, mg parallel, let's uh, do the trig. 
opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. Which trig function? Yeah. I think most of the time parallel ends up being sine, except not always. I can think of a few weird ones where it does not. Specifically, if we were tugging upwards at an angle and had to break another force into a component. So I don't memorize like we did last unit why. It's like here it's I draw the triangle out, but then I realize that I know the hypotenuse, so it's going to be cross multiplying. So the shortcut is once you know the trig function, it's the hypotenuse times the trig function, which is sine 40, and we're done. The mass is 7, g is 9.8, sine 40 degrees. How big is tension? Forty four point one? Yeah. Forty four point one Newtons. So what kind of questions, now I'm starting to think about those essay questions. Remember there was one on your last test, those using principles of physics right to explain questions. So what kind of additional questions could I add to this? Well, oh, as theta increases, as the angle increases, what happens to the tension. Okay. As the angle increases, what's going to happen to your tension? Is it going to get bigger, smaller, or stay the same? And convince me. What if we got to here, what would the tension be? More specific. Wouldn't it be? Is, in fact, aren't we using the Blackaby theorem again? From last day? We are, okay. Increases. Use the Blackaby theorem. Uh, I, I, would, I would write more than that if this was a test, Emily. I would say uh, if it's level ground, tension zero. If it's vertical, tension is mg. So as theta increases, tension increases. I could do that. In fact, we sort of answered this question with that skateboard one. Uh, oh, never mind. We'll come back to that one. Next page. Two objects are connected as shown. M1 is 12 kilograms and it sits on a horizontal surface, has a coefficient of friction of 0.17. M2 is 9.8 kilograms and it sits on a frictionless surface at an angle of 56 degrees. Find the acceleration of the system. Okay. Ah, no, relax. You know what I'm going to do first? I already got the dolp in front of me, so no. Someone dolped for me. I would neither dolp, neither will I gulp. I will plunge right in. It's a force question. You know what I'm going to do first? Darn right, I'm going to label the forces. Oh, that's a great point. Uh, what do you guys want to use? Let's use 42 degrees. Means I stole that diagram from somewhere else and changed it. All right. What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious one.
What else? And I'll call it normal force number one since the other mass is also on a surface, so I'm assuming there's going to be two. What else? Which way? Why? I have to use my imagination a bit. There's no way this can be moving to the left. If it's moving at all, this is pulling it down and to the right. And it might not be moving. If I get a negative, I'm going to assume it's moving to the right. If I get a negative acceleration, now what that's telling me, Trevor, is friction isn't enough. This mass is not enough to overcome the friction of this mass, and it's not going anywhere. But let's as assume it's moving to the right. So friction force one is to the left. What else? Tension. That's what's pulling it to the right. What are the forces acting on mass 2? Get the obvious ones. Gravity, straight down. What else? Normal force, number 2. What else? Tension this way. What else? Uh, I would normally say, yeah, but it looks like that mass over there is frictionless for some strange reason. Uh, otherwise, I would have friction acting in this direction too, Caitlin, but don't need it. I, th I think that's it. Ah, I got a real issue though, because I'm on an incline before I do anything else now. I'm going to break gravity up into its components. Mg perpendicular. An mg parallel, where this angle here and this angle here are 42 degrees. Who's winning? Now this is tougher. What we're going to do is we're going to walk along the rope, which is level for the first part and angled for the second part. Sorry, angled this way for you guys for the second part. Who's winning? Well, it can't be M1, so we have to make the assumption. If any force is winning, what's the only force that could be a winner here? Which way is this whole thing moving? To the right and down. What's the force that's pulling it to the right and down? Don't say MG. Uh, MG parallel is. Here's my winner. Here's my winner. So anything that ends up pointing down the hill, winner. Anything that ends up pointing up the hill, loser, winner. Now I'm going to walk along the rope. Oop, I run into tension up the hill, loser. Oh, I run into tension that'll end up down the hill, Brianne, winner. I run into friction, which is going to end up pointing up the hill once it gets over here. Loser. Have I walked down the entire length of rope? Then I've got them all. And since I've been looking at more than one mass, it's M1 plus M2 times A. And you know what? I should call this, uh, I think I called this M2. So over here, I should have an M2G parallel, shouldn't I? Otherwise, I might get my M's confused and cancel when they don't. Uh, tension cancels. Yay! What is M2G parallel? Well, let's look at the trig. Here's my angle. Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. Opposite. How about here? Which trig function is M2G parallel? So we're going to get M2G sine 42 minus counter friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. What? Which, which one? M. 
M1G, okay? And this one's nice and level, so we are back to our familiar from grade 11 where mu, where normal force was always equal to mg. It's not on an angle, so uh, mu m1g. And Connor, how would I get the a by itself? What would I do with that bracket? Let's do that on this line. Is that okay? Oh, not divided by a, Mr. Duke. The acceleration is going to be m2. 9.8 G also 9.8 kind of convenient sine 42 minus mu 0.17 M 12 M1 G is 9.8 All divided by 12 plus 9.8. Bracket. 9.8 times 9.8. I guess I could just use my squared button. Sine 42, close off the sign. Minus 0.17 times 12 times 9.8. Close off the top, divided by, open a bracket. 12 plus 9.8, close off the bottom. Do you get 2.030793? Am I right? 9.8, 9.8, sine 42, minus 0 0.1712, 9 9.8, divided by 12 plus 9. I am I right? Yeah. Acceleration equals 2.03 meters per second squared. Before you turn the page, Before you turn the page, find the tension. That'd be a nice part B to this question. To find the tension, how many masses are we going to look at? Just one. Which mass? I don't know. Uh, do both masses have tension on them? then I can use either one. I'll try and use the one where tension is on the winner side because it's easier to get the T by itself then. I think I'm going to use mass one. What's my equation going to be here? If I just look at mass one, who's winning? Tension, who's losing? Oh, okay. Tension minus friction equals M1A, tension equals M1A plus friction force 1. Mitchell, friction is what times what? I don't know, normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. Uh, in fact, it's going to be M1A minus mu M1G. Right? That's not too bad an equation to generate. Uh, tension equals M1, 12A, 2.03, minus 0.17 times 12 times 9.8. Shouldn't it be plus? Yes, it should be plus. I don't know why it became minus suddenly, Mr. Duick. Thank you. Who caught that, Connor? I was wondering because I was doing the math in my head and getting a negative answer and going, what the heck? Is this... Bleh. Anyhow, it's going to be 12 times that number plus 0.17 times 12 times 9.8. And I get 44.4 newtons. Stop. How else could I make this nasty? So look at the question that I gave you. What if instead I gave you tension and mass 1? Could you use tension and mass 1 to find the acceleration? And then once you knew the acceleration, what if I didn't tell you mass 2? Could you use tension and mg parallel to find and acceleration to find mass 2?
Yep. That's an easy curveball to throw at you. I think there's one in the homework or there's one in your review, which is why I'm not doing one right now. Example two. How would you determine which way this system moves? Well, there's a problem here. If this is heavy and this is light, I'm pretty sure this will pull this up the slope. But Joe, if this is pretty light and this is really heavy, Joel, I think this could pull it down the slope. And it also depends on what friction is right here. If friction is really, really big, uh, maybe they're an equal. Uh, ooh. How would I determine the direction? Now, I'll be honest. In real life, I would guess. And I would probably guess this guy is the winner. And I would solve for A. You know how I would know I had guessed wrong? I'd get a negative answer. And all I would do very quickly is point my friction in the opposite direction. In other words, if I thought this was winner, this was sliding up, I would have had friction pointing that way. No, this is winner. Then friction's pointing that way. I don't even need to redo the equation. I change a plus sign to a minus sign. I tweak it slightly. And uh, I can quickly resolve it and get the right answer. That's what I would do. It's the fastest way. But here is the mathematical way. What are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious ones. What else? What are the forces acting on this guy? Get the obvious ones. Sorry? Mg, big Mg. Normal force. And tension. Oh, and big M, Mr. Duke. Capital M, G perpendicular, and capital M, G parallel. Look at your rope. Two forces cancel, first of all, or what one force cancels. Tension does. Which two forces are in opposition to each other along the rope? M1G and and parallel. If parallel is bigger, you know which way block M is going to slide? Down the hill. If parallel is smaller, you know which way block M is going to slide? Up the hill. And that's the answer to this. If M1G is greater than MG parallel, Big M slides up. If M1, M1, Mr. Duke, if M1G is smaller than big MG parallel, M slides down. But to be completely honest, rarely do I crunch the numbers like that. Usually I assume the one that gravity is pulling straight down on is the winner. And if I get a negative answer, it's a quick and easy fix. And it usually just means changing a few things on my calculator for that matter. Like example three. It says find the acceleration of the system. Okay. What are the forces acting on mass one? Get the obvious ones. Gravity. What else? Tension. What are the forces acting on mass two? Get the obvious ones. Gravity. Normal force, tension. Who's winning? 
Because I need to know who's winning so I can figure out which way I'm going to point friction. Well, let's assume the 5 is winning. And let's point friction that way. Let's assume it's getting pulled up. Is that okay, Brian? Oh, and components. M2G perpendicular and M2G parallel. What's the winning force here overall? What force is causing this whole thing to accelerate when you walk along the rope itself? What's Emily giggling over and smiling for? Questions that we don't know the answer to, but we can solve the first question I asked, which is the winning force. We may not know why Emily was smiling enigmatically, but we know this. Who's winning? There's two of them on there. I need more specific, please. Someone said gravity. I got gravity here and gravity here, and I got more specific, the exact name of the force. You think these guys are winning? If this was winning, then friction would be pointing up the hill. I've decided to let this be the winner. I think this is pulling this up the hill. Even though that mass is bigger, I'm gambling that the uh, friction and the slant isn't that big. Is that okay? Or have I lost you? I can't read you guys right now. Kara, I have no idea what you're saying. I heard the word why, and then your volume went back to the original again. I didn't have, I had to guess something. You Just guess. You know how I'll know I guess wrong if my acceleration ends up being what? Negative. I'm going to let that guy, now, as soon as I decided that, I pointed friction down the hill. If I had let this guy be the winner, friction would have been up the hill. Which is the only, if you guess wrong, change you have to make to quickly redo the question. Oh, and to do that, all you do is make the friction positive if it was negative, or negative if it was positive. Very, very easy fix to do. So let's let this be the winner for now. If I get a positive acceleration, then Emily, I'll know I'm right. Winner. Then I run into tension, which is a loser. What about this tension here? Well, M, when I follow it all the way around, it ends up being the winner. Down the hill, friction ends up being a loser. Follow it all the way, it ends up pointing up and slowing down. And there's one more, M2G parallel ends up being a loser as well. And that equals M1 plus m2 times a. So again, all I did here was guess what my winner was, and I'll see if I'm right. Oh, tension cancels. I get m1g minus friction is what times what? Friction is what times what? Mu times a normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as a normal force. What? So this is going to be mu m2g perpendicular minus m2g parallel. That equals m1 plus m2 times a. Uh, let's go label our diagram and do the trig. This is 30 right here, which means that this is 30 up here. Jacob, M2G parallel, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. I agree. What about M2G? Hypotenuse, I agree. What about perpendicular? I agree. So if M2G perpendicular is adjacent, you know which trig function I'm going to drop into here? cos. And if m2g parallel is uh, opposite, you know which trig fun function I'm going to drop in here? My next line is going to be this. 
m1g minus mu m2g cos 30 minus m2g sine 30. Is that okay, Sean? And Sean, how would I get the A by itself? I want to do that on the same line. Can I do that right now if that's okay? Divided by M1 plus M2 times A. Let's plug in the numbers and see if we did guess right. Now, look up. Look up. If we guess wrong, if we get a negative acceleration, Brian, then that would be a loser. Put a negative there. That's pointing in the wrong direction. Put a positive. There. Well, we'll think about it. It would look like this. This would be your winning direction. So winner, make it positive. This right now, you have pointing in the wrong direction. You have to point it up. So you would still want to leave it a loser, but you'd need to make that a loser. It'd be a very, very easy fix to do if you redrew it really quickly. And if I confused you, don't worry. I'll show you in a second. Let's crunch the numbers. What's M1? 5. What's mu? 0 0.05 times 8 times 9.8 cos 30 minus 8 times 9.8. Screen froze? Well, while I'm getting the screen back from the dead, can you uh, substitute in the numbers and then try and get an answer, please? Here's what I get when I plug things in. 5 mass 1g minus coefficient restriction mass 2g cos minus mass 2g sine. It's a bit of typing, but really top is all one fairly easy line to type divided by the bottom line. I can do this all in one step, and I'm going to. Bracket 5 times 9.8 minus 0 0.05 times 8 times 9.8 cos 30 close bracket minus 8 times 9.8 sine 30 close bracket closed off the top divided by 5 plus 8 do you get 0.4927 or am i wrong let me double check 0.49 0.493 if we go to three sig figs. 0 0.493 meters per second squared. Kara, did we guess right? Yes. Now put your pencils down for a second. Put your pencils down. What if we had guessed wrong? Here's all I would need to do. So I get a negative here. Go. I go like this. Look up. Really quickly, draw friction in that direction. This is now the winner. This is now a loser. Friction is still a loser. So all I would change is that and that. That's a loser. That's a winner. It's a really easy fix. You can rewrite everything if you want to, but you really don't need to. Okay. And I thought I'd turn something on that was supposed to make all that stuff vanish, and it didn't. So... We'll have to do this manually. Undo. Undo. There we go. Oh, now that you know that, could you find the tension? Yeah. I'd probably use this mass to find the tension, even though tension is the loser. There's way fewer forces. Here you have one, two, three forces. Here you only have two forces. It'd be an easier equation to solve. Example four, and I think this is the last one. Yep. 
I like this question in that this question combines everything we've done so far this year. We're going to use some kinematics and all sorts of stuff. It says this, at the top of a hill, an 84 kilogram skier has an initial speed of 5.8 meters per second. The ski hill has a coefficient of friction of 0 0.08. After the skier skis through a vertical drop of 3.2 meters, what's his final speed? Hmm. Hmm. Nicole, you know what I'm going to do here first once I wake up? Dolph. Yeah, I'm going to draw a little picture. Well played, Nicole. Well played. I'm going to have my skier skiing to the right and down, so here's my hill. And I'm trying to think here. I think I need a theta, and I think I forgot to give a theta in this question. You guys okay back there? Because I keep hearing little noises, and it's irritating. Shush. Thank you. Um, let's see. I gave you a vertical drop of 3.2. Yeah, I need a theta. Assume... Theta equals 16 degrees. Sixteen degrees. Here's my skier. Okay. How can I find his final speed? Well, that's V final. What have they told me? What have they told me? VI. That's nowhere near enough. They've told me the vertical distance, but have they told me the distance down here? Can I figure it out, though? Well, yeah. If I redraw this triangle with a 3.2 and a 16 and an X, how far along the slope does this person go? How can I solve that, can I? Yeah. Opposite hypotenuse, which trig function? Now this time I'm finding the hypotenuse, which means I better write this out. The sine of 16 equals 3.2 over x. I think x is going to be 3.2 when I cross multiply divided by the sine of 16. What's the distance down the hill that this person travels? You guys get 11.609? 11.61? So, he travels for a distance of 11.61 meters. I have VF, I have VI, I have D. 
What else can I find from this information? Well, what have we been finding an awful lot so far during this unit? The acceleration. And Katie, I think that's what I'm going to spend the most time on this question doing. I'm going to solve for A. Here's my drawing, but I'm going to put the skier right here. What are the forces acting on my skier? Get the obvious ones. What else? What else? Is there friction? Yeah, which way? Which way? Up the hill. I need to break up mg into components. So there is mg perpendicular, and there is mg parallel. By the way, the only reason I didn't draw this on here is because to draw this on top of my skier, I didn't think I could fit it in on because I put this on the left side of the margin, so I quickly redrew it here. Who's winning? Free. So my equation is going to be mg parallel minus, who's losing? Friction, not very much friction, we're on snow, and that equals, since it's only one mass, ma. This is going to be mg parallel minus, friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 I know the force same size as the normal force, what? It's going to be mu mg perpendicular equals ma. Oh. Connor, how big is this angle? How big is this angle? 16. Uh, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse? Adjacent to hypotenuse. Adjacent. So for parallel, the trig function, because I know the hypotenuse this time, it's going to be hypotenuse times sine. Mg sine 16 minus mu. And uh, perpendicular ends up being cos. This equals ma. Oh! You know what I notice? Something cancels. What? John, the mass is canceled, turns out. It means that, by the way, this is why an adult and a little kid can ski next to each other without having to constantly adjust their speeds. Otherwise, wouldn't work. Parents could not ski with their kids. Um, oh, A is going to be 9.8 sine 16 minus 0 0.05. I think that was mu. Let me double check. 0 0.08. Sorry. Times 9.8 times the cosine of 15. What's my acceleration down the hill? Cosine of 15? How about cosine of 16, Mr. Duke? I did that up here, too. You get an acceleration of 1.94761697? Yeah. How about 1.948? 1.948 meters per second squared. Because I'm not done. That's not what the question asked. 
Nicole, what did this question ask? Okay. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. VF squared equals, what was VI? 5.8. Squared plus 2 times 1.948 times how far do we say you're sledding for? 11.61. Now 78.86. Is way too high. That's the that's, you're going faster than on the freeway. Oh, but that's because we didn't find VF. What does this equation find us? VF squared is 78.9. How do I find VF? Take this number and do what? Square root. 8.88. Meters per second. About 32 kilometers an hour. Sure, that seems okay. Okay. What's your homework? Number one. Number two, three, four, one, two, three, four so far. Seven. And then technically you can now do every question on the big unit review. Although I'm going to look at some weird examples. So you can work on those. Take home quiz next class.